Here is Scream Masters, the entertainment program featuring themed mini documentaries, reviews, and exclusives aimed at presenting the entertainment industry in Nigeria to the Nigerian and international audience while documenting unique breakthroughs in Nigerian movies for future reference. We will bring you all you love to see on your screens. Stand by for a short take on one of the themes we hope to explore. In the Nigerian entertainment industry, there are beauties to behold. Nollywood is flooded with beautiful women in various packages and styles. Here is how we roll. We have a crack team with strong takes on our choice of Nollywood beauties of all time. Ijoma Okago is CEO of White Rabbit Concept and holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Theatre Arts from the University of Calabar, Cross River State, Nigeria. She has been honored by her school for hosting the first ever Thespian Awards. Joseph Ukbong, popularly known as Joey of the Style Plus Crew fame, is an entertainment industry professional and CEO of Astro Media Integrated. He is a versatile talent manager and sure knows a beautiful woman when he sees one. Now let's roll the Scream Master's take on Nollywood beauties of all time. Leading the pack of Nollywood beauties of all time is Liz Benson. Elizabeth Benson, popularly known as Liz Benson, was born in 1966. She's an actress from the old block whose rise started from the soap opera Fortunes in 1993. She later switched into home movies like Glamour Girls, True Confessions and Izaga, to mention a few. The epic-born acting diva is one of Nigeria's most prolific actresses and holds a degree in dramatic arts. She has worked with reputable Nigerian filmmakers such as Lola Fani Kayode, Zebe Jiro, Andy Emenechi, Tunji Bami Shigbin and Lai Arasami. Liz Benson is the quintessential beauty of the Nigerian uh, movie industry. She is, as for her age, she is absolutely gorgeous and she has been able to maintain her beauty through the years. Her skin, everything about her, her carriage, her dress sense. She does almost everything, if not everything, very well. And from the little I've heard about her off stage or off screen, she's a pleasure to work with. Everybody has their challenges or their issues, but she's a pleasure to work with. So she, she has a sort of a maternal flavor, you know, Liz Benton is, 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 the, is, the, is the mother figure, you know. So I think she's very talented, but I think even more than that, I think she was able to apply herself effectively. You are to eat again. Look at the time for God's sake. What is it? Can't have peace in this house. What? In whose house? Don't you have any shame? Zelly, I don't want to be rude, but please just stop stressing me. Stop! While Liz Benson's beautiful face brightened screens in Nigeria and abroad, she had a very sober private life. Liz lost her husband, Samuel Gabriel Etim, in 1998. She was left to take care of their three children alone. She is quoted as saying she actually gained strength from his character and that made her carry herself and her kids through the loss. She did not remarry for a long time because she says she takes marriage sacred and doesn't want to rush into it, but has admitted to being in a relationship recently. Because she kept on acting, even despite of losing her husband, I think that's a strength. Because some people will be totally destroyed or like it's, you know, some people would go into drugs or alcoholism or, you know, just lose it. But she was able to be strong and, you know, forge on and keep her career going. And I'm sure there are people that don't even know she lost her husband at an early age. It's hard to excel when you lose something so big. But she did. So I think that it maybe even spurned her to, as tragic as it was, perhaps it even somewhat, she felt a very big need to achieve a lot in a short time or with the, the rest of her life. So it's sad, but one of those things. On Saturday, July 18, 2009, in Wari Delta State, 
Liz Benson got married to Bishop Great A. Mayer, saying she has found her missing rib 11 years after losing her first husband. Her new husband, who was a widower, controls one of the biggest churches in Wari Delta State, and Liz is now an evangelist in her husband's church. When you get to a certain age like she has, who knows, maybe that is what she has found now, and that is what gives her peace, and that is what gives her, you know, a reason to go on, and, you know, all of that. So if she has found God, God is the ultimate, really. So if she has found God, yeah, I mean, that's a commendable field to follow. It helps to increase her audience, you know. And in the reverse, if she chose now to act a movie, or when next she's acting a film, or when she acts a film, you know, she, people would want to compare her role as a preacher to that as a performer. Maybe what she should make is a Christian movie. And then we see. <laughs> We've missed you so much. And we're sorry. But I don't want you to be too hard on your father. He's really and truly sorry. Liz Benson and Maya started acting when she was five years old and made her screens beautiful. She was quoted as saying she will stage a comeback to the movie industry with the intention to strictly use her roles as a platform to glorifying the Lord. Another Nollywood beauty of all time is Omotola Jolade Kende. Omotola Jolade Kende, popularly known as Omo Sexy, is married to Captain Matthew Kende and has four children. Apart from being one of the most successful Nollywood actresses, she is also a singer and is involved in extensive charity work. Omotola has indeed brought beauty and grace to millions of screens. If the question is if Omotola is beautiful, I don't think it's even a question. She's one of the standards of beauty as far as I know. And I'm privileged to know her personally, off screen, and she is what you're seeing on TV. So she's very beautiful. And she's, she's even, my, my opinion, uh, she, she, she's, her beauty is special because she's had four children. And after having four kids, she doesn't look like someone who's had any kids. Or at least some of the time, she doesn't look like that. And that's rare. I know how my mom looked when she had four kids, so there's a difference. You know, my mom looked very motherly, but much like I can even pretend to be a, a, a bachelorette, so to speak. And that's my, that's my point. So, yes, she should be in, in the list. And when it comes to her performance and her ability, she's an icon. She's an icon because I've seen her act even in real life. That is, we were playing a bit and she began to act a role that was, there's no camera. And she, 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 she did it right, <laughs> quite right. She's very good. Omotala belongs on this list, absolutely, because Omotala has been in the movie industry for a long time, as long as I can remember. She came in as a fresh-faced beauty, and she has been able to maintain that beauty over the years, even despite having for kids. I mean, if you look at Omotola, you wonder how she does it. She has a great sense of style. Her, she's beautiful, great skin. She just looks absolutely amazing. And I think that Omotola is one of the top beauties of the Nollywood industry of all times. It's a surprise Omotola only started her acting career in 1994 in the film Venom of Justice. Omotola Ikeinde burst into the Nollywood film industry with the movie Mortal Inheritance in 1995 where she played a sickle cell patient who fights for her life even when she knows she might not leave. At the end of the day, she has a baby and eventually leaves. The film, which received good reviews, won her awards for her role and is still known as one of Nigeria's best movies ever made. Since then, she has not looked back and she has starred in blockbuster movies like Games Women Play, Blood Sisters, All My Life, Last Wedding, My Story, 
the woman in me, and a host of others. Omotola got married at the Ikeja Registry on March 23, 1996, and had a beautiful white wedding on board a Dash 7 aircraft flying from Lagos to Benin on April 19, 2001, to Captain Ekeinde. Within the space of 10 years, Omotola has been able to play major roles in numerous movies. She has played a prostitute, a prisoner, the lonely housewife, the bitchy manipulator, and the girl next door. Omotola radiates the aura of a real star. And that is the point. Can you bounce back? Do you believe in yourself enough to know that you can bounce back? I want to thank you guys for always being there for me, for believing in me and knowing that I could also fall in love with the wrong man and that I could also get my heart broken. But like I said earlier, I will bounce back. Thank you very much for listening to me this week. And I thank you so much for having this much fun with me. Thank you, all you callers. And I want you to call back next week and keep this style with me. Same time, same station. Lands FM 99.1, baby. And I will be waiting for you. Now I'm going to leave you with the same song. Like I said, no one be like you. In 2005, some actors were accused of collecting huge fees from producers because of their A-list celebrity status. The Actors Guild of Nigeria then placed the actors on a one-year ban. Motola Jolade Kende was one of them. There was also Genevieve Naji, Stella Damasos, Nkem Owo, Ramsey Noah, Pete Edoche, and Richard Mofeda Damijo. They all came to be known as the famous eight. This caused some of them to venture into music. That year, Omotola launched her music career and when the band was over, Almost Sexy bounced back with a renewed vigor and played roles that came alive on the screen. The jury is out on whether she did well in music. When she started music, we, we spoke at length and I worked with her a little bit on some things to see what she could do and so on. And I told her that, look, this is a very long road. You know, you've grown very much in acting and you make movies very quickly but you're just starting in music it's a long road and what I don't want you to do is to be discouraged there's no guarantee that your your first album will be a hit the effort was definitely to be commended and the results like I said are hard to assess so if I were to be consulted should she have done it or not I would still say yes she should have done it but done it differently it's pop okay it's mostly pop um, with um a lot of undertone rock. Okay. Yeah, behind it. Mm -hmm. Actually, probably will end up in, in, in the rock genre. In the rock world. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, because I'm from Africa, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it, it would be like shock therapy if I just went straight into rock. I know. So yeah, I'm taking it easy. Okay. And, you know, Starting introducing mm -hmm. it generally and trying to find myself to okay. my voice okay. in, in, in music. So kind of like evolving yeah. through the music. Yeah, okay. exactly. Sounds Till I get to where I'm, I'm right, going. Right, right. <laughs> Up next on our list of Nollywood beauties of all time is Genevieve Naji. Genevieve Naji started her acting career as an 8-year-old child actress the in the then popular television soap opera Ripples. In 1998, at the age of 19, she was introduced into the growing Nigerian film industry with the movie Most Wanted. Her subsequent movies include Last Party, Mark of the Beast and Ijele. She has starred in over 80 Nollywood movies. In fact, if there's anybody that should be on this list, it is Genevieve Naji. I don't know how she does it. When Genevieve first came out, you know, she was under so much scrutiny and pressure to perform because she was such a good actress. She was natural. Genevieve brought something different, even from her dressing, you know, she went out of her way to look different and nice on the red carpet, and that just changed things, really. I think she's a pace setter, and she's one of the contemporary beauties, but a beauty nonetheless. Um, I know a lot of people who like Genevieve, who love Genevieve a lot. Also people who don't like her very much. Quite a few of them, too. <laughs> but everybody agrees. She knows what she's doing.
Genevieve has received several awards and nominations for her work, including the Best Actress of the Year Award at the 2001 City People Awards and the Best Actress in a Leading Role Award at the 2005 African Movie Academy Awards. CNN calls her the most recognizable face in the African film industry. She appeared on CNN African Voices and her ratings soared worldwide. I enjoyed it, I think. It was fun. I, I felt alive in front of the camera somehow because I was a shy kid, actually, believe it or not. I was a shy kid, but then it was an opportunity to come out of my shell and express myself in a different way, in a way I wish I could as a normal person. Now she's looking to break into the Hollywood movie industry. There are certain limits that are possible because of the society. An easy example is simply the fact that you have to work with small budgets for movies. Even if you have the same acting skills as who, I don't know, Daniel Craig or you know, Tom Hanks, if you can't afford to put the same special effects and the number of shots and the kinds of set, you can't have the same result. It's as simple as that. In fact, you see this between uh, European movies and American movies. Already you have that kind of distinction. So I think that for what is available, many of these people, some of these people here, including Genevieve, have done a very, very good job. Genevieve has the X factor. She's, besides the fact that she's talented, she has that superstar presence about her. And um, her looks just work for her. Her good dress sense. For, to, be, to be an actress, to be a, a, a star, it goes beyond you can act. It goes beyond you can portray a character on TV, you look nice on TV. There's just something more that you should carry that will now take you beyond what other actresses to make you outstanding let me put it that way to make you stand out among outstanding actresses and Genevieve has that X factor that's why you know she has been singled out and then she works very hard she works very hard at the way she looks if you see her you just know a lot of effort goes into everything about her, her image and everything else in 2004, she signed a recording contract with EKB Records, a Ghanaian record label, and released her debut album, One Logo Logo Line, a mix of R&B, hip-hop, and urban music. 2008 saw her launching a clothing line, St. Genevieve. She donates a percentage of its proceeds to charity. Genevieve Naji is considered to be one of the highest paid actresses in Nollywood. She also had a closely guarded secret. Just recently, it was revealed Genevieve has a daughter who is already in her 20s. Beautiful Chimebuka is currently undergoing the NYSC program and Genevieve's daughter, whom she has kept away from the limelight for so long. She has been able to, over the years, still maintain her youthful look and not even give out the impression of strains of motherhood, stress of raising the child alone and all that it hasn't affected and for that for, for the child to have come this far and even gone through education and finished and everything i would i would say she's actually a good mother you know no complaints you never hear you never see the child anywhere or scandal i think it's commendable a million sparks went off when genevieve appeared in the banjee's fall in love video the chemistry between Genevieve and the band on that video, especially that case, triggered rumors of an affair between the two celebrities. Our jury is divided on whether a Genevieve the band marriage is desirable or condemnable. Forgive me for saying this, and I'm sure her fans and the fans of the band forgive me for saying this, but uh, no, that relationship should never happen, never ever happen, because it just felt to me like a Whitney Houston Bobby Brown situation and I was just not happy about it. People would just mind their own business, you know, and wait to hear the news on the television or on the newspaper. Oh, did it work good? If it didn't work good, that's usually my own opinion. I don't know how they are, but I hope if they are together, I hope it works out. <laughs> And
And now we move on to Stella Damasos on the list as a Nollywood beauty of all time. Stella Damasos was born Stella Ojuku in Asaba Delta State. She grew up in Benin City and first appeared in the film Abused in 1992. Her career has seen her starring in over 50 movies and early this year, the star actress signed a multi-million naira fashion label deal with SDA Collection as the brand ambassador of Am Victorious, a Houston, Texas, USA-based fashion label company which creates unique one-of-a-kind American made lifestyle products for brides babies men women lifestyle among other products she can smile forever she doesn't get tired of smiling and it comes from the heart you know because she's a very good actress we're not sure if it's from the heart but let's just say it's from the heart you know she's magnetic she's talented she's creative she's flexible she's good to work with and so on I worked with her a few times quite good. So she's an asset to the industry. I'm very happy she's part of the Nollywood. Very happy. Since we're talking about the beauties, you know, of Nollywood, I think Stella Damasos deserves to be on this list because she's, she's a beautiful woman. She's a woman. She looks like somebody who, when you think of uh, how a black African woman should look, she just portrays it all. She has a beautiful face. She has a beautiful body, good skin. She takes care of herself very well. She dresses properly. She just looks really nice. She is reported to have finished the second session audition for her Stella Damasos Art Foundation, where she's offering a three-month training for talented young Nigerians free of charge in the areas of acting and singing. Her performance on Celebrity Takes Two remains a high point in her rising and rising profile. Stella has an Abuja-based company which organizes seminars and produces movies. She's also a columnist with PM News, the afternoon newspaper based in Lagos. This Nollywood girl is a hard worker. Her production company did a 13-episode TV show called Changing Lives, showing on AIT, OSTV, UK and Ghana. A show that is loved by many on millions of screens around the world. Nollywood beauty Stella Damasos has kept her private life private, even though she gets asked about her love life and children everywhere she turns. Stella is a widow taking care of daughters. She says it's important to be part of their growing up. Stella does not expose her children to the public, believing that they will decide what to do with their lives when they come of age. Losing a husband? It's, it's life changing and I can't imagine what she went through and all the drama that followed with, with some rumors of difficulty with the extended family and all that, I, it was very sad. I, I once in a while I'd call her and just talk to her and she'd say, Joe, don't worry, I'm, it's okay, one of those things. I said, look, when I come to Lagos, I'll check you out, I'll say hi to you and so on. She went through a lot but it seems like she has a lot of very f good supportive friends. When you lose someone, the pain of separation just threatens your sanity and I'm sure she was thinking how would I go on, what would I do now and everything but I, I like the way she was able to pick herself up and continue and forge on. A rumor of an affair with gospel singer Sami Okposo was very strong some months after her husband's death. Stella and Sami denied the rumors, but Sami Okposo later owned up in this interview with Iroko TV, saying they both considered marriage. It was something that we really, really considered, um, especially after Jai, oh my God, oh, rest in peace, Jai, you know. After Jai, she wanted to be with a friend. Someone who she already knew well enough. And I looked at it. I said, okay, are we going to spoil this if we take it to that level? Um, we considered it. Stella Damasos was recently asked about her love life, and all she said was that she loves Jesus, loves her life, and the way things have turned out for her.
And now we have Kate Henshaw, an Hollywood beauty any day. Kate Henshaw won the African Movie Academy Awards for Best Actress in a leading role in 2008 for the film Stronger Than Pain. That is quite a journey for the girl that first auditioned for an acting job in the movie When the Sun Sets in 1993. Fifteen years after clinching her first movie role, she was rolling with the best. Absolutely amazing. She's gorgeous, tall, slim. She has been able to maintain a beautiful figure. If you see her on the red carpet, she dresses very well. She always knows how to do her hair. She's just, I don't know, she's just amazing, really. Kate Henshaw is the friendliest and warmest actress I know. And that means a lot, because I know a lot of actresses. Kate Henshaw is excellent, excellent at adapting to roles, situations, duties, even at making other people do their jobs, not as a boss, but inducing, bringing out the best. She's a people's person. You put Kate Henshaw in the middle of a group of people and she tends to bring out the best. Kate is the oldest of four children. After completing her primary and secondary school in Lagos and Calabar, she spent one year at the University of Calabar reading remedial studies, then majored in medical microbiology at the School of Medical Lab Science, Luth, that is the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Beautiful Kate, who started work at the Bochy State General Hospital, has beautified many screens with her award-winning movie role. She can switch roles. She can go from a house, housemaid to a madame, to a top CEO, to a village maiden, to a queen. She's just good at switching roles and she can portray anything. And she really knows how to enter into a role to make you believe that she is right there. She's the person that is going through that thing at that time. I think um, it's a testimony to, I think I think she did a, a service to both the performing arts and to her original science background. I think because um, if I were her classmate, I'd say, "Ah, that's a, yes, she sit next to me. She was this and that one, and you know, and the reverse as well." But I think she's a versatile person. Uh, some people are good at doing things they've never trained for. I, I dare say I'm a bit like that because my entire show is career. I never went to school for that. I, I'm an engineer. So people would say, this guy is supposed to be designing bridges and roads. What's he doing in here? Yeah. But I think it depends on your interest and your natural aptitude. Her career continued to blossom, but her marriage did not. Kate Henshaw called it quits with her husband after 12 years of marriage, saying they grew apart because they were both engrossed in their different endeavors. You hear all kinds of things. They, they accuse the actresses, even the ones that are faithful to the last day. They accuse them of all kinds of things. If they look at their co-actor, you know, nicely, it's they, oh, they are in love now, they're having an affair, all of that. But we can never know. <laughs> We can never know. If Kate married someone, she loved that guy. And when you lose your, someone you love, whether you know, they grew apart or not, there is that pain. And dealing with the pain, whether you're a celebrity or whoever you are, is always difficult. It hurts, but after a while, you know, after you know, a few months of crying on my own, I just said it. I, I choose. I will choose to be happy. I will choose to continue. Both said it that okay, fine, you go your way. I'm going, but. Our daughter will not suffer. She is key. She is the most important thing. It's not about us. It's about her. And she's doing quite well. She's handling quite well. She's having the best of both worlds. Yeah, her schoolwork hasn't suffered. Uh, she's fine. That's our take on Hollywood beauties of all time. Stay tuned to this channel as we bring you more exciting insights on everyone you love to see on your screens. It's Screen Masters.